I'm just getting worried that I had, there was a couple of episodes back where I was, we had guests. It was with Wim yeah. and Kariana and Bill. And so we had guests and I, I found out if I get nervous or at least a little bit anxious to where I'm having to think ahead or like stall or plan ahead or something, I, I, I scratch my beard yeah. like this, exactly. just, just occasionally. Oh, what I didn't realize is what, how horrible that sounds on the microphone. <laughs> Did you ever get uh, an email from that sound guy? I did, I did. I just haven't gone through breaking down everything that we have and send them off. No, it's good. He knows what he's doing. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. So I got to get all of my setup, though, like... Yeah, no, no, but that's great. Like, at least he's, he yeah. wasn't... No, no, it wasn't, it wasn't someone who was just bitching shit talking. Bitch. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, no. Oh, good, good. Yeah. So we get him. Awesome. Yeah, yeah so I, I like that. I like when people... The, the strong fit too. policy is normally like, if you're going to complain about something, present a Offer, solution. Exactly. And a solution that you're willing to assist in, not, it should just be better. Yeah. <laughs> or that guy said. <laughs> so, well, this week we wanted to do, we were just talking about how we probably are going to end up having to do something like this almost every year. The State of the Union address. Yeah, it's like yep. the State of the Union, the State of Strong Fit. Um, it's going to be our annual What is Strong Fit yes. episode. <laughs> Maybe we get better every year in yeah. explaining what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if it wouldn't keep changing, it's a re- very much of a moving target to describe. Anyway, no, but what I want really out of this too is for people to understand what is it that we are looking for. Yeah. yeah. I think that's important too. What is it that we offer? Obviously, what is Strong Fit, but also what is it that we are looking for? Because the um, I get the feeling sometimes that's not with us that's, that's in general that whenever you offer something especially when you offer it for free um, it seems that people get the idea that you owe them that which is very that, strange yeah. more than if they pay if they pay they, they give value to it if yeah. they don't in somehow, shape, or form, it becomes uh, something that is owed, which I find very strange. By the way, I'm not only with strong fit because I do it too on the stuff I don't pay for. Like mm-hmm. for the longest time, I didn't pay for movies. I will always download them on, yeah. the, you know, on the internet and stuff I'm like that. I'm still about that life. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you almost then don't value the movies that you get because you get them for free. You and maybe you get a sh- some shitty quality. No, never. Yo, I no, would. never. I would, have I, to, I would have to endure some Minimum shit. one gig size movie. I would. Wa- I was streaming. I couldn't wait for no. Avengers Endgame. No. So I was watching like... No. I, but I'm in Austria. No, I'm you can't do that. No, 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 no. So I watched no, no, it that. lonely. No. In my apartment. No. It was basically a guy with a video camera in the theater. It was so no, bad. No, me, it's one, one to four gig size. Yeah. And then on that TV, nice and everything. Yeah. But still, it's not the same excitement yeah. that if you pay for it that's very strange but okay so in our case what is my problem with that though is that um it's like we're selling something by giving it for free except it has no value mm-hmm. because it's free so because it looks like we are selling something we owe everyone but it has no value yeah so it's even worse yeah we put ourselves in a bind there's a yeah, it's even worse it's weird we i used we used kind of a lot of the principles in designing sales systems and structures right. like that before and and there is lots of information out there that if I sold you two pool cues, the same yeah. exact one, and I and I sell I sell one of them for I don't know how much forty bucks and one for twenty, more than likely if I go back in a year or in six months and I survey everybody that I sell, I sell half of them for twenty, half for forty. The people that paid 40 will most likely, actually not most likely, will be dramatically have a better customer experience. Yeah. They enjoy the product better. More, yeah. And, and that is, <laughs> that's the space when in other businesses, I always wanted to be in that space of business anyways. We charge the most for it because yeah. we want to offer the most value. So people who are choosing the most value are choosing to have a better experience on purpose with yeah. skin in the game. But... I believe in what we do, that yeah, the information too, that yeah. we want needs to be out for free because we so. don't have the ability to just get it into every single person. No, you plus know? like some, like I still, no, but there was, way back then there was a world where all the, the good discoveries were given for free. Uh, Einstein, no, I'm not comparing, but yeah. uh, Einstein did not charge for E equals MC square. Pierre and Marie Curie did not, did not charge. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I mean, Pasteur didn't charge. None of those guys charged. It's just Godel theorem was released to the world. Now, yeah. I mean, again, not comparing strong fit and those geniuses, but uh, it was always given. You know, it, it was almost like a responsibility to our humanity exactly. to give your knowledge, which I always believed in. But it's a weird thing to me that in today's age, because people, I guess, are oversaturated through marketing and stuff like there's that. There's a lot they, of marketing. There's a lot yeah. of marketing disguises information. That's for sure. It's, but so sometimes I feel like we don't uh, like that's a little bit how they see. Oh, they're, they're selling something anyway, so therefore I have the right. Mm -hmm. Like you watch, you have the right to watch all this because we're selling it to you, but it has no value because it's for free. Yeah. Sometimes I get it's a weird impression I get from people. I'm like, but this is supposed <laughs> to be a conversation between humans. Yeah. Not we're not selling you. Anything now, plus, the, you know, there, there's a strategy towards if you were trying to do that, which is to give out the information but leave it very vague and incomplete, yes, and then that way people have to come to you to have it explained and sorted out, and then you charge yeah. for your time. But in this case, here, I, I think I, I, working mm. with you with this, I, you try. I mean, every day we are talking yeah. about how to communicate these and reword these things and give more, and give yeah. more in different angles. So the completeness of the information isn't the issue. I always see it that there is sometimes a lack of commitment <laughs> on the other end, and that's always the nature right. of something being free. I, I understand, I understand, but people have to see also where it's frustrating for us. <laughs> like to this day, like so, um, we, we're gonna explain what, what the idea, original idea of strong fit was, but let me give an example of what I'm talking about. Um, I put a lot of stuff on nutrition out there, right? My, what is my goal? My goal is to start a conversation on a subject that I feel was ignored in the field of nutrition. Mm -hmm. Ignored at great, not risk, consequences. Yeah. For example, full ingested, food ingested versus food digested. I think it's for that alone is a major point because how can you possibly study nutrition without taking this into account? I believe that not taking into account food ingested versus food digested, invalid studies. I agree. In nutrition. Fully, yeah. yeah. So they're not wrong, wrong, but they're not right, right either. They're, they're only so, right in a very specific and context. And there's a lot of wiggle room there, and that's what's kind of Right, and the context is never explained. Yeah. Right, so how can it, how can, you, cannot, you can establish correlation at best if you don't, mm -hmm. if you don't put the digestion uh, into it, not yeah. causation, and yet, this is how in nutrition it's explained as a causation model, which I'm like, fuck, that is yeah. very unscientific. So I'm trying to bring this conversation forward. But not to say, hey, I figured out something. I'm like, guys, there's a problem, which is really what I do. And it's a matter like of raising my hand. That's well, really what I do. And, and we've seen this, and I think you'll see more of this coming forward from Strong Fit in the next year. But crowdsourcing almost every aspect of it because you're only one person, which means right, yeah. you come up with an idea and you, you do all the background information, you pile everything in and you sort right. through and yeah. sift through until you think it makes sense to you. That's what I've yeah. seen. Yes. And then you work on it on yourself. <laughs> yep. And then from there you kind of figure out what it means and then it's like, hey guys, try this, hey guys, try this. Right. And then you kind of open it up to everybody else. Yeah, okay, but I'll tell you what frustrates me, because for something as ingest, uh, food ingested versus digested, there was a circadian rhythms. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how come we're not taking into account circadian rhythms when it comes to nutrition? I'm, I find it very strange. Yeah. Right, so I study this, and it's not always simple, like it's a, it's a shit ton of stuff. I test it, as you say. Then I, once I figure I'm right, then I, 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 I uh, study it some more, retest it, give it to you guys. And once we have that, I really see to the world going, hey, there's an idea, and I think this is very interesting. Right, so this is me trying to further the conversation. Yeah. And what I get is, yeah, but that guy said that. <laughs> like, no one, like, whenever someone has like, oh, I don't think so, I, they, they throw at me that kind of quick answer going like, yeah, no. Not explaining, why just saying, well, like I said that. But no one ever talks to me about the points I'm making. Like, if you want to have a conversation with someone and he offers a subject that he thinks is of interest. Yeah. Like you say, like, you know what? I want to talk about the Joker. That was a great movie. And you go like, yeah, let's talk about Avengers. <laughs> 
But this is what everybody is doing. Or no one is <laughs> questioning the circadian rhythm stuff or whatever. Yeah. What they come instead is like, yeah, no, no, I eat protein because otherwise I get injured. Even though it's a weird conversation, yeah. not to say stupid, but let's say weird conversation to say, if I don't want to have a protein check, I get injured. That's a fucking dumb statement. Yeah. Because like you can establish causation from there. Yeah. Well, you, you're getting hurt training and yet you blame, you the difference is a protein shake. How do you know? Yeah. Because how do I know what I'm talking about? Because I fucking study the shit. It takes me weeks and months to get to a conclusion. I put it out there where I try to have a logical, you know, argumentation. Yeah. And all I get is, yeah, but Avengers. <laughs> but I'm talking about the Joker. Well, and, and I do think that if, if you come and you say something along the lines of, well, say in the beginning with the nutrition, right? Like, all right, no, the basic, don't mix carbs with your protein, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, just that alone, so many people will come in and blah, blah, blah. But it, you didn't look at any of that and say, well, somebody said this. I'm not going to look into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's not how you fucking have new ideas. It's, this guy said not to look in that corner. I'm not going to look in that corner. You never right. fucking learn anything. Yeah. And it, but that. by the way, I do listen to those people yeah. and I'm like, okay, why do you say that in one context? Where are the holes? Because yeah. that's what I do. I take, like, Rob uh, Wolf is a friend, and we talk through emails and everything. And then th that's the thing is whenever I talk to those guys, they answer on the subject matter that I'm approaching. Yeah. For they the, don't. In pursuit of the truth. <laughs> like, right, because. Not, not, not for pursuit of, like, let me keep doing what I want to be doing. But, but that's, that's the thing, yeah. right? So, but therefore, it's not a conversation, though. Because yeah. I'm like, this is. So, if I say this is why you should not do that, this is my opinion, uh, based on th that argumentation, based on this logical, those, this evidence and yeah. everything, this is why this, I believe, is a mistake. And you come and you say, yeah, yeah, but I'm doing it for why. I'm like, but you did not discuss whether the X. Mm -hmm. is right or wrong. You just say you want to do it for Y. I'm like, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about X. If you say you're right about X, but I'm still going to do it because of Y, we are not talking about the same movie. Yeah. Then there are people talking about Avengers. Like, but you can't come to me and say, how come you're not talking about Avengers? I'm like, but I've watched Avengers. Yes, I did. But right now I'm saying Joker is a great movie and I want to talk about that. You don't want to talk about the Joker? Fine. Go make a blog post about yeah. Avengers and then I'll come and read yours. Yeah. But we're talking about the fucking Joker. Right, right now, now we're talking about the Joker. <laughs> this is the but like like I put a gun to your head. Yeah. That is the weirdest thing. When I have people they're like so so we had a conversation because someone was like uh doing the protocol but not doing the protocol. Yeah. And then doing the the no fix November but saying he has a 15% drop in performance and low carbs hurt people anyway. They don't do it. Yeah. Okay, I can tell you something, and I'm dead serious when I say that. If I were to follow somebody's advice that draws my performance level by 15% and get me hurt, I, I would be done following them. I would not follow. I would say, yeah. like, you know what? I'm not listening to you. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. By the way, there's plenty of people to follow. So much stuff. Why yeah. gets like. And, and especially since anything correlating a protein shake to an injury is never going to really cross sure. the gap. <laughs> to where, you're, to where it's going yeah. to make sense to you. Exactly. At That's that it. point, it's like, all right. No, but okay, let's, let's talk about what this is. You want to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, uh, when did I yeah. ever say no to that? My thing is, you don't get to debate me to prove that you're going to do what you want to do by debating me on a subject that I did not approach. Yeah. Because let's say it says Rob Wolf said, like, low carbs broke people. What does breaking people means. He was talking about uh, adrenaline fatigue and stuff like that. Okay, but is that, not, is that relating to low carbs or is that relating to training? So by high, the way, high, high, high output training. By the way, simple question. Uh, when they went low carbs, did they go up on the caffeine? Or, or types tired, of stimulants? Up, yeah, yeah. Right. If you don't check that, you don't know. Yeah. Because what if they went up through stimulants through the wazoo? Mm -hmm. Like low carbs, but then caffeine went up, fitted or whatever, like the amount of caffeine per day tripled. Yeah. And are you training at that level of output or do you think you're training at that level of right. output? Right. And even if you did at that channel output, did you never rest? Yeah. Because the stimulants allowed you to, or, you know what I mean? Or you got so stressed, you lost connection with yourself. Therefore, mm -hmm. you started to go past where you, you had a yeah. point of return, you know, point of no return or stuff like that. How do we know at that time? Because when Robo feels talking about, he's talking about years back. Where the CrossFit Games driving you to go further than mm -hmm. they are, that's a long conversation yeah, we can have. But unless we know all 
the variables in this equation, saying low carbs broke people, yeah. That's co that's correlation. Well, that's that a is. tough thing to boil all the way down to. Then, like taking oh, that's extreme, right? You're talking extreme yeah. training output, extreme yeah. athletic ability. No, we don't know what they're doing on, on the side. Yeah. We didn't but, check if they're asleep. Yeah, but, was, what, but what I mean is, yeah. you're taking those the circumstances surrounding that, right? Exactly. And then you're going to boil it down now to that. Well, see, it worked there, or that's what happened there. Yeah. So everybody needs to eat carbs. Well, I hate to break it to you. Yeah. But like, we don't have a problem with people eating not enough carbs. I don't think. I don't have I a just, problem. I just don't see that. I don't see I don't that see either. I don't see that in the United States. I don't see like, geez, <laughs> yeah, by the we way. need to get more carbs in these people. Right. So they but, stop but then they're going to say performance. It's like, did you look so, at us? Yeah. Like, do we look like we don't train? Because everybody gives me that one. Even people that are far less athletic or stronger than me go me like, well, as an athlete, I'm like, I'm not? <laughs> yeah. Like, do we yeah. look small to you? That yeah. Do we look like we never train? Is it like, you want to go at a strongman training? Let's talk about athletic <laughs> capacity and let's go at this. It's not like, no, yeah. I mean, like 40 years of my life at a national level. What? Yeah. And so, but again, um, I don't mind, uh, not arguments, but you want to challenge me on what I said, I'm all for it. Yeah. But that's not what they're doing. What they're doing every time is they're bringing somebody else's point of view that has nothing to do with the subject at hand. Yeah, it's like you're a, just changing the conversation. And those things always try to just turn into just a mic drop. Then where it's like here, right? Boom, boom. And it's like, oh geez, you said you said some guy's name and the thing. R right. Julian's like, he's fucking emailing me about these same subjects and seems to agree with me. By the way, that too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know I mean, yeah. so th this is what bothers me with, I guess, the free stuff or stuff like that is the fact that. People want to mic drop all the time saying, yeah, but that guy said that. I'm like, yes, yeah. and I read that stuff too. Yeah. Chances are, I, if I didn't talk to the guy, I read his stuff, but that's not what I'm talking about. So I would just for, like for people to answer what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And for example, putting during the day, I say, yeah, that goes against circadian rhythm. Can you explain to me where I am wrong on that subject, please? Yeah. And if I'm right and you insist on having protein during the day, fine. But then, first of all, don't tell me you're doing it. Uh, you're doing the protocol because then you're not. And s second of all, then that's the end of the conversation is, well, I want to do it anyway. And I'd be like, okay, <laughs> sure. Yeah. But you can't insist to prove that I'm wrong without answering me on the subject at hand. You, you know what I mean? And, and I think that almost gets to the root of what kind of strong fit is too. Yes, is exactly. It, it, is, yeah. it is based on experimentation. It is based on constraints, not objectives. It's based on yeah. communal intelligence. Like that's what the thing that floats around there in the world is. Meaning those things, like we need them to be good, constructive discussions because that's how you find ways to explain it better yes. on the podcast and better in some. No, plus they give me stuff. Yes, exactly. Good the, communal the intelligence amount. gave me. Like uh, Daniel is the one who sent me the stuff about the heart. Yeah, I did not figure that yeah. one on my own. It Every, was sent to me. I, I had hints, yeah. but it was sent to me. Yeah, and we keep drawing these new new things from it. So all of that is extremely valuable. And so that's why it's always worth it for us to put those things out. For exactly, me. totally. But man, does it get... It, like we talked about uh, some of the profile stuff we were looking at yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. Boy, does that drain a lot of energy. Those things well, are just that, like, that's, fuck. That, that's the thing is, I, honestly, sometimes I don't understand what the point is yeah. of those conversations, which is where I get... Uh, me frustrated and I'm trying not to kick people out on stuff like that because I don't want to be an asshole but at the same time I'm like you're misunderstanding the point of all this the point mm -hmm. of, of all this is searching for the truth please don't start to ask me what the truth is uh, we can go at epistemology and I'll, we'll, we can start for Socrates on like guys don't don't do this like understand <laughs> like if you want to go at philosophy trust me I can go. I can go into this. Like I've been at this for a very long time. We're going back to like, yeah, um, yeah. The, the stuff like that annoys me because I'm like, I'm not selling you anything. Yeah. You're not paying for this. The point of this is we're trying to put stuff out there so that the truth can be uncovered, not by me, just in general. Yeah. We are trying to elevate the conversation. Mm -hmm. To put, that's what strong fit is, is a way to learn. But it's not mine in that sense. Like objective versus constraint, it's not mine. It's those two dudes in computer science, right? With yeah. the book, Why Greatness Cannot Be Planned. That has been one of the black swan events of my life. Mm -hmm. 
and of actually strong fit as well was been that book. Yeah. It was that big of a difference. Right. I want to share that with the world because it made so much to me, just like I tell people to do It's the same thing, right? Yeah. But it's not like I don't own the stuff. I'm not selling it either. I'm like, hey, that was awesome. Let's talk about that because yeah. that that yeah. that process with the kind of how, how that maybe trickled down from, from there through you and into the community is how strong fit works in my mind. Yes. I think. So and when I picture it yeah. is that is that you read this book and this concept of objective versus versus constraints made a lot of sense to you in that moment. Oh, right? yeah. And will you oh, describe yeah. then the how angels, you the angels went yeah. down from heaven and talked to me about it. <laughs> will you they des- like Ta-da! will you describe one I want you to go through like how that lined up with the things you were doing right in strong fit right. life past everything and then also how you're like Fuck, I, there's a I few things I gotta yeah, yeah, yeah. change, right? So I'm reading this and by page two, I'm like, oh shit. Oh, it was like one of those things where I feel like the, a baseball bat, I went like, you know, my eyes and go like, yeah. I'm awake now. Like uh, there was an insight out of this. The reason there was is because um, it was, you know, like it was kind of blurry, but right in front of my face. Yeah. And I knew it was there. I just couldn't explain to you in words what is it that I knew was true. I knew it was right. I just couldn't explain to you. So in those cases, I don't talk much because I'm like, I can't explain to you. I just know it's there. You know, like you, it's there. I just, it's like a black swan event. You know, it's coming. Yeah. You just don't know when and where. And I'm yeah. like, fuck, it's there. I just can't tell you exactly what it is. And, um, but at the same time, like imagine knowing that something is right, but almost everybody is telling you that it's wrong. Yeah. And you're like, am I, am I fucking crazy then? Now, I... I want to, some now I do think too that like forty years. Some, you say this seems like everyone says it's wrong. I think, though, a society. lot of it is that people society. just society. don't even look at things that way. It's like it's it's not even that I would be dug in on the I need an objective and go you know those yeah, situations, yeah. but I would be. It's, uh, but it's just schoolies. correct. Yeah. But it just but it, I mean schools. But it's just surrounded. It's such a piece of everything. Yeah, but also everything understand, is that way. understand where job. I'm coming from. Yeah. yeah. Because I think also, by the way, we're, fine, we're going to talk about this, but part of the whole problem is people get hung up on me. Mm-hmm. Like I'm the one uh, spewing the truth. Well, actually, I'm a vessel, nothing yeah. else. I am not the creator of the truth. Yeah. I'm merely a vessel for, for yeah. it. That's all. I'm just trying. Well, I, sound, I sounded very prof. Yeah. I like very religious. I, like, one, I, but I, yeah. like, I, I would use the term. Uh, Aggregator, consolidator of the truth. Yeah, because they're a thing. vessel for the truth. That sounds like, hey, welcome to the religion. Well, we did say it was a religion put now, your, but anyway. Put um, your truth in me. I'm a prophet. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, bring your women and money. Um, uh, bring your women and money. Uh, that goes back to strong men and bitches. Um, and money. Um, fuck, where was that? Oh, yeah, so right. it gets attached to you. No, but it's a, a, yeah, yeah, but understand where I come from. I grew up in the French educa- education system that is very, very heavy. Right, you're talking like since you're six, seven, it's you know six hours, and then by the time you're eleven, it's eight. Mm-hmm. Every single day, no sport, twice a week, but ball. And I mean, so yeah. that was a very, very heavy system on me. And since I um, started to feeling around like right nine, ten, the only reason I did well at uh, at eight. Oh, that sound is gonna kill me. It's okay, it'll stop. Yeah, okay. Uh, at eight or nine, because my brother took, uh, Sonny took me under his wing and I, he started to make me work and everything because I never had parents that actually made me, you know, work at the stuff. They let me do my thing. If you mm-hmm. let me do my thing, I'll, I'll be doing my thing. Like that is no problem, right? So, but so very heavy French system who from the beginning, I was like, no, memorize. Whether you understand why or not is not the yeah. problem. And so I was told what to do and I was told how to do it without the understanding behind as to why I should be doing it in the first place. That is very, very hard for me to process, right? Mm-hmm. So since I'm very young and it was like, that's the way it is. And I was told by the French system that I was stupid basically because grades, because I never had to double a class, but every single time I was still at the bottom of the pack going like, I don't get it. Can I ask a question? Cause yeah. I don't get it. And then which I, I don't blame the teachers, but you know, like, okay. So I come from a very heavy system that we, that, that I failed, but I would say that failed me. Mm-hmm. Like it's a back and forth, right? So that's my problem always with the ac- academic world is it came from a world focused on objective. Yeah. Very, very heavily. Some people thrive in that, I did not. And I still don't, right? So I come from continuously being told objective is the way to go. Memorization is the way to go. Getting a grade 
just pass to the next one is the way to go and everything, which goes against my, against everything of what my philosophy about life is, right? Or learning in that case. Yeah. Right. So I come from there and suddenly there's a book that tells me, no, no, you were right the whole time. Yeah. And I'm like, what? And suddenly it's not me saying it. It's um, a proven field saying it. it's not. Uh, what's his name? Show Prat, Show Christ. And, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, this real, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that either. It's like, you know, you are your greatest. No, not that either. You're powerful beyond measure. No, not that. It's like computer science, uh, artificial intelligence research, stuff like that. Yeah, it's not a bunch of woo. Yeah, right. And so there, there's the whole stuff in the back, and he explains how that works, and you can tell. It's what, what, what really uh, pushed it forward, too, is like, look, we build a system like this, and the end product, the result product, is correct. If we build it based on objectives, you get to nothing. If we build it based on constraints, so this mm -hmm. logic, it works. And I was like, and to me, it hit me on two levels. First of all, I was like, ha, you know, like that objective versus constraint, but also on the way uh, AI research works. Instead of looking at the end product and saying, how do we get there? That's not the way learning, fin, getting shit done works. It's we set something at the beginning and we let it run its course. And then if it does not end up at the right place, that means you're started wrong. So you have to start again until you find the right way to start, which will lead you to where you want to be, which is something I've seen works for everything in life. Mm -hmm. At least that's been my way of doing things always. It's like you start something and you let it run. Yeah. And if you don't get to the right place, it's not that you fucked it up, it's just that you set up the wrong constraint for the beginning. Mm -hmm. That idea I felt was correct. Was That's the way you see culture. Like suddenly, that's a principle that seems to be true throughout life. Culturally, uh, you know, human culture, yeah. psychology, all that stuff, economy, math, we are proven based on that. So I was like, <gasps> there it is. And so suddenly it gave me a validation and it gave me a framework to make everything that I do that I feel is right work. So it was such a big moment. Which then you, we've seen it now was, <clears throat> it's actually often, because it's, like you said, it's kind of always been a part of you. Yes. It's, um, and so it's been kind of woven in that way, just not in those words, into all the other yes. strong stuff exactly. we've done. But what, this, what it's given us is as you've been playing with the concept is that then now we have a better way of explaining it, <laughs> which is exactly. always nice. Because right. it's, it's hard to say, I mean, even on a basic level in training, why somebody, sh maybe it's better to not train with a clock or keep score in your right. group classes all the time. And, and why? And you have, then you have to do this long-winded thing, but it's like, let's just get down to the fundamental principle of why maybe you want to try something. But, and, and that, but because, how? Because you start something and you see where he ends up. If he ends up in the right place, mm -hmm. that means you you have the right idea. Yeah. But that's that's backward compared to school, for example, because school, I don't care where you start. All I want is I want you to finish here, which means you know that date, mm -hmm. regardless where you start. So it's a convergent mindset, yeah. which pigeonholes you into one direction only. That to me amounts to brainwashing. Yeah. You know I mean, that's why I hated school because if like no matter where you start, we all end up in the same place. Plus, I'm like, no, 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 no. That's plus, not what I do. Plus, then you're worried yeah. constantly about the end result, which then we talk right. from a first very in, stressful from a yeah. first in perspective too. Is then there's always this correction because you do have there's a goal, there's an expectation all right. the way there, and then there's this: is it there? Is it not? And then you constantly have these. Yeah. It's just completely set up to but, fail. And, and by the way, that's not how it works. Anyway, yeah. nothing. That's why I like the Black Swan book as well, because nothing in life has actually works like that. Einstein didn't follow that. Mm -hmm. How would you create something new? Yeah. If everything is based on memorization, then how, do you, how does anything new ever get created? That's why they all kill me. It's like you have to be able to prove it. But Einstein didn't prove it. took 40 years for him to prove E equals MC square. Anyway, you have to start yeah. somewhere. <laughs> Otherwise, where is there to prove? Yeah. You can't test something you don't know. With an end result that isn't even, might not be there, but that, it's just not the but point. But to test something, you need a testing tool and a metric. How are you going to create a testing tool and a metric on something you don't know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in order to test something, that means you already know what it is. But then what do you need to test it for? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? That's the yeah. problem with they're talking about with empirical evidence. It's like you already know what you're testing for. And by the way, that alone changes the way you test things. Yeah. So it's never enough. And I also think that the um, 
oh, how do I put it? The, the, your eyes are too far, not in the present anyway. So we talk about right, yeah. pre presentness and everything from, from training to nutrition to awareness and all that stuff. And focusing objective on, ob on objectives yeah, it's is always going to yep. always detach you from the present. Yep, which is, you know, uh, there's the, the new season of Rick and Morty's out. And they had the, he has these, Morty scores this crystal that will tell you based on every action you go, there's this, all these views of how he's going to die. So he's just like, goes like this, and it's like him and a pretty girl, and he's dying, and he's old and happy. He's like, so he does every movement based on what gets right. him there. Well, it turns into this total shit show. And somewhere along the line, Rick says, listen, Morty, people who spend their whole lives worried about how they're going to die are already fucking dead. Yeah. And that's yeah, kind of yeah, how I look at the yeah. thing with the, the yes. even with the objective stuff. It's like, yeah, well, you're missing the whole everything because you're worried about the thing that you may or may not get right. at the end of the And road. by the way, that if you set like that, like the second you reach an objective, you set the next one. So you will never be in the present. Yeah. You'll never enjoy the process ever, which we know is not the, the point at yeah. all. So but the, the, those raise the question is like, how do I do... So the, the, what, what is strong fit? So that, that, that's the key for me is my, my studies of humans. Mm -hmm. What I want is I want humans to do better. It's a broad subject. Okay. So, and I don't know what the answer is. So what I start is by uh, pointing out the flaws. Let's fix the flaws first. Yeah. So, you know, that's we're doing that with the health of a company, for example, or even your health physically or whatever, is you build a structure first. How do you build a structure? Well, that's easy. What is not there? Yeah. You start with that. That's the critical mass principle. It's not about raising um, certain things up. It's making sure everything falls within a certain percentage. And this percentage. would be a, a good opportunity to tie in, too. We talk about not doing something uh, totally random, but something that you haven't right. done before. Right. Yeah, Novelty exactly. Yes. In that yeah. point there. And, and that, I think, that fits in very well with that. You know, that like Exactly. Right, right. Exactly. So, the, the, well, that's the same idea. Was like, what is it you haven't done? Mm -hmm. Because what interests me is to first, it's the low-hanging foot, is first fix what is broken. We do that for all that you haven't done or you, you haven't developed. Let's yeah. do that first. Because objective basis is always, well, let's take what you do good and be great at it. I'm like, but can you be, so can you have pure performance without health? Everything that I studied tells me no. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't mean you want just health. You also to perform, but a certain structure, a certain base is yeah. necessary. That's the S pyramid. You need, you need that. So a lot of the stuff that I do is trying to find how do I build a better base. Yeah. So strong fit in that sense is providing a structure, a structure for nutrition, a structure. And so what is a structure for nutrition? I believe like an understanding of the nervous system is necessary. Mm -hmm. Understanding of the circadian rhythm is necessary. If you have that, I believe we could do better studies and therefore learn better. If we don't do that, we are going to keep having major flaws in our study of nutrition. Mm -hmm. Is that a problem? I believe so. Yeah. And that's what I'm, I try to say every time. It's like, guys, we are not considering those important things. Because amidst a constantly worsening health crisis, that's for sure. I just think that like everybody should be on board to having like all of this data coming from like even standpoints. You know what I mean? Like Where, we're not winning. That's for and, sure. And that's yeah. just not the way it is right now. Um, we had talked earlier too about we've gone through almost progressed as as we described, but I, about how maybe if someone didn't hear about strong fit at all, right? Like what subject matter even would what, we? What would I start? Would then? you want to guide them through? And that's for people maybe just finding this, or if you listen. And you're trying to tell somebody how to get started, right? Right. There is, and like, what we can get some content together in that in the future, and you'll see that. But um, in maybe what subjects do you think now you would have them go to? I would start with um, objective versus constraint. Yeah. Like I would like that we did two podcasts on a subject, and then there's a book why great greatness cannot be planned mm -hmm. that I would I, I would suggest to start with that because it. I think it will allow people to understand better what is it that we do. Because we do have been called uh, unconventional before, right? <laughs> um, we do things in a way that can be not necessarily confusing, but that can be misinterpreted because we don't do it the same way as others. Yeah. Again, like the way we do stuff in the fitness industry, usually it's like, um, give me views on YouTube so I can monetize the video. Uh, I'm selling this. So, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like I'm creating a... a Rapport, you know, yeah, with yeah. people in order to do this and that. I'm like, 
not that stuff. No, the, no. The, the videos are not monetized. You know that if you have free YouTube. Uh, yeah. We don't make any money of the podcast. We, outside of the, the few hundred bucks we're getting from the support from, from some of you guys. But it, it's, not, it's not that, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, and again, the strong fit is not based upon like, let's teach you strongman movements. We do that, but that's not the base of strong fit. So we do so many things that do n within strong fit, but none of them explain what we do. Correct. Right. So that, that can be, well, I guess confusing for someone coming. So what is it that he's saying exactly? Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's teaching you to learn. Yeah. Maybe that comes out of my frustration of growing up in the world that kept telling me I was stupid when I was like, no, no, I can do good things. And, and I, I, I can relate to that too because you grow up in, in a way in which you're told that the way you learn, the way you mm -hmm. do things the is way you wrong, are. the way yeah. you are, is it's just something you needs to be more like this. Yes. Yes. And, and then, but then from that begets a kind of a distrust or dislike. It's a light way to put it, of authority. And <laughs> yeah. specifically being told what to do or what to believe. Yes. And that means that then you search and explore for your own version, your own understanding yeah. of what's out there. And you're not going to take just what somebody says. At the root. You have to look to the root of it. And I think that principle, though, like that process we want to impart on almost yes. everybody out there. Meaning exactly. when you do present something to them, you need to take that approach like, I'm not just going to fucking do this just because Julian says it or just because no, Tom that, over there the says it or of, Dick yeah, over there says exactly. it. I, I need to now, I hear it, learn. now I'm going to actually learn it. And if I do it all and I'm really doing it, then I can be like, that didn't do anything for me. Yeah, I think strong fit is a way to learn. Yeah. I am trying to put forward a fairly newer way to learn that I believe is correct. and. I believe that to learn as humans, it goes past, like for example, you can't learn history if you don't understand, if you don't understand anthropology. You can't learn history if you don't understand evolutionary biology. Mm -hmm. um, you can't, under, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, you can't, history without anthropology, how would you connect the dots? Mm -hmm. Or without evolutionary biology or psychology or all that stuff. Like I believe that the, the, the way the school system, which has, basically turning us into literal soldiers that can just press a button. That's something that happened almost 200 years ago for very specific reasons, but that is not valid today anymore. The, mm -hmm. the, the way we teach, the way we learn has to change. Yeah. And so that's my goal really, is to teach a way to learn. And I think, you know, in the fitness space where we kind of rest in, it's, it's always interesting because we can actually have that entire conversation about what strong fit is. And I don't, need to bring up movement because it's I think it's kind of a part of what everything but is. By the way, that's a very good point. Are we in the fitness industry? I don't think like we I are said, I, Like I say, I say it's yeah. the space with which we rest. No. But I don't even know. Not really. Yeah. I don't think. The nice we, thing is we're not paying rent, so I don't, we can do whatever. <laughs> yeah, we can do. No, but I think we, that's the thing is we, we go through the fitness industry, yeah. but past it. Yeah. Like, because that's, but me, that's the point really. too, that, though. And that's it's the like, point, and that's me. So. But that's also why yeah. people go to this narrow fitness industry, tell me what to do, yeah. tell me what to eat, go yeah. for that solution. It's like, well, it's never going to get you this because you didn't have just a fitness eating and numbers and exercise right. and it's problem. Not, yeah. You had a you problem. And the you problem led to all of this, and we're not exactly. going to fix it by changing one little thing. And that's the thing is also like, um, then we go back to your question, but the, the what if... It's a you question mm -hmm. and not a protein question. What if it's another carbs question? Because people say, when I do to get better, I need to eat more carbs. What if you need to train harder? Yeah. What if you're just not putting the intent in the gym? Because mm -hmm. that has to be part of the conversation as well. They go like, yeah, yeah, I'll do that tomorrow. But I'm like, but that's my point. You need to change. You can't do it tomorrow and the day after because you don't know enough about yourself. Recovery, exercises, do you truly know what you're good at? Do you know how much rest you need to do? You know, how often you need to No, because you haven't put in the work yet. Well, and, and saying, like, I'm going to eat more carbs is, a, is cheating on the exams, man. And like the West Side example from a few weeks back was like, you don't need to be doing what these people are doing right now. You should oh, be yeah. doing what they're doing 10 years ago. It, right. And then move on. You don't get to just jump on right. and be like, exactly. all these guys eat a shit ton of carbs. Like, yeah, well, they're fucking just 
killers. You know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah. that's and, like, and by the way, they've been killers for 10, 15 years. Exactly. And the amount of shit that they take might allow them to do certain things yeah. that, but maybe when they started or when they were where you are right now, they were exactly like you, but not like they are now. Mm-hmm. But so a lot of those conversations, and, and I understand there seems to be people want to mimic instead yes. of understanding. That is one of the most common things I see that's frustrating. Right. To you and to me yes. in, in the... It's mimicking instead of understanding. Yeah. Mimicking is not understanding. So you go like, I want to be Matt Frazier, therefore I'm going to train like him. But he's training like this now. Mm-hmm. When he started, that's not what he did. When he was at your level, that means when he was six, yeah. uh, six years old, because uh, that's basically the, the same thing. Um, you have to see how he's training then. Yeah. But even even that, if you were just to follow his progression, you would still fail sure. because that's his, exactly. Yeah. The seat is taken. Mm-hmm. What's wrong with being you anyway? And by the way, that seat is taken. Don't be him, be you. Yeah. That's the only way you're going to make progress anyway. Right, so, but the problem is, again, you're trying to mimic. And People th- ask me, what do you eat? And I'm like, but it doesn't matter. You're not me. Because there's literally a guy who made a post saying like, but I, I eat three, 4,000 calories of fat just like you. I train and everything. Like, I didn't get any muscle. Like, then maybe you didn't train like me. Yeah. Maybe you didn't do your calories until your females bend, which is sleep? good, by the way. Or is your yeah. sleep not as good as it should be? Like, what, no, but have you been, whatever doing, it is. Have you been yeah. doing the shit that I've been doing for yeah. the last 15 years? Have you been at a, I've been at a national level uh, of sports since mm-hmm. I'm nine years old. I'm not kidding. In six different sports. Yeah. Right. Have you done that? Have you gone? Did you go really good uh, wrestling, jujitsu, yeah. strongman? Well, that's where, like, so, so from jumping to what you're doing right now, if I just, if someone just jumps onto that, it's like, you didn't start like at home base. No, here, but man. like, <laughs> I can't do a Kai yeah. Green workout. If I were to go train with Kai Green and do his workout, I end up, I'd probably get rabdo end up in the hospital. Yeah. I can't train like him because I'm not Kai Green. He has a level of understanding of his body and intensity that I can't match. Yeah. There's no fucking way. You, you've seen those videos with him. He murders people with big size. <laughs> you're done. Like, I mean, so this is the problem is a lot of people look to mimic rather than understand. Now, I think there is a certain part. We've talked about the process of learning in the beginning. Or there is some f- sort of memorization, which I think mimicking is kind of. Yes. The, or at least an extension of. From it's the beginning of understanding is at yeah. least you need certain base. Yeah. Right. So what is the base Right. Yeah. that I think? Understanding objective versus constraint is the first base. Yeah. I really do. So if you're starting strong fit, that's what you should start with. Second, um, second so I would go into tension over position because I believe if you understand fundamentally tension over position, by the way, that is a, a, an evolution of the objective versus constraints mm-hmm. applied to training. That's what tension versus yeah. position is. Position is an objective, tension is a constraint. All right, so if you understand the step one, you can get to step two, which is understand tension over position. Once you've done, why, why that step? Because I believe you can relate to it. Yeah. Because we all, all of you, most of you, sorry, not all of you, most of you are in the fitness industry. If you're watching this, chances are you train. Not, not everybody, but so, well, at least you've done exercise and everything. And if you can understand that very important concept, you will see where you have learned incorrectly. Mm-hmm. Most of us, and me included, have learned movements by putting our feet in a certain place, by putting our knees in a certain place, instead of going the other way. So going back to that AI research is not, no, no, you're not trying to look the part, you're trying to be the part. That means that you start a certain way and you see where it leads. If you, if you hit that end, that means you're started wrong. So you have to reset yeah. and find a different way to that. Instead of just avoiding the wall in order to go straight, but that's not, that doesn't work. That's what we all try to do and that's been proven not to work. So tension over position will show you that you've learned exercises the wrong way by looking at what they should look like because you go on YouTube and you watch the guy train and say, I'm, that was weird. That was weird. The My heart just, just blew open. Yeah, exactly. The, <laughs> you're looking, you go on YouTube, you're watching that guy lift, and you go, in order to lift that weight, I'm going to look like him. You're back to mimicking. And that's exactly what we don't want. We're like, well, I explained to you the principles in order for you to become you, that's strong. Not for you to become him, for you to become you. Hopefully, that's strong. Yeah. If it's Dan Green, no. no. But, you, I mean, at least you can go yeah. somewhere. But that, so that's always the point. The, point, the problem is like you're, so many times there are people looking at, for example, Dan Green, oh, I'm going to do what he does, and at least I'll get to 60%. 
That's not how this works. Yeah. It's also not how he got to 60% of it. And Exactly. And and that probably isn't how you should do it. <laughs> yeah, right. right. So we, we're, we're facing the same problem. Yeah. So And when we talk about, though, that, that understanding, I, I, I want to build on that word that you mentioned, yeah. right? Because you, gonna, they're going to try to mimic, mimic, but you want the people to try to understand. That's the and what thing. I view understanding as, from a, just a terminology standpoint, is how now does this stuff that you learn fit into your world and, and your life and your... Yes. And we look at the things that have come back now that we've been doing this for a while now, that we're getting from people who take their own understanding, apply in their world, wherever that is, and now we're learning a bunch back from them. Totally. From the endurance space, yes. from the performance yes. space from Andrew. We have great people working with, like, on the ground and affiliates now, like, you, you know what I mean? Like, like Ray's out coaching. No, no Fix Bill November has changed the lives of a bunch of people. Yeah, yeah. And, and that is what, but those experiences coming back to us, seeing how that fits into your space, now helps us help people that are closer to your space than I Helps me understand. Yeah. Where, where, uh, where he was right, where he was wrong. So that's, I think, that's like the most important piece that people need to take going forward is like anything that comes out of this, whatever this right, is. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. the in the next year, we'll have a conversation that will be even more built upon it, I'm sure. Right, because it'll be about regard. business and stuff yeah. like that and everything. And, and, but... and all the things that you've learned and developed and work on yeah. since then. But if it, people take these things, it's like, don't just fight it and challenge it because that's not even going to do anything because we're just going to... But again, I, I, what I want is, is try it, and then if it doesn't work, but we you're can not see. Challenging me, I would actually enjoy a challenge on what I'm talking about. Yes, yes, yes. But that, my, my biggest yeah. problem is people challenge me on an other subject, and I'm like, but I don't want to talk about that. But I mean, if you want to try to get to the truth and to help everybody find the yes, truth, yes, or even what, yourself. Yeah. What, what I need is if you present me with some information that I disagree with or don't want to do or just challenges me in a way that I don't yeah. want to do. No Fix November for that example. Like, yep. I just don't want to do this for a month. All right. Just fundamentally, I just didn't want to. But what fucking good does that do anybody? <laughs> and by the way, look at for what, real, you, what, what, good does look it do? what you, you discover. Exactly. That's the problem also with the objective-based mentality is you'll never discover anything new. Because yeah. your objective mentality, based mentality means that you can see the future. Mm -hmm. You know how to get to where you want to go. Yeah. I got news for you. You don't. And that's, you know, the Black Swan book. That, that's mm -hmm. just not the way life works. You don't know how to get to a 400-pound bench press unless you've been there already. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's not how, the, how this works. So you think you Especially know how to get there. Especially if you haven't gotten from 300 to 315. And you know, yeah, like... but, even, uh, but even like, because me, I, I got to 395. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to 405, I didn't get to the four plates. Yeah. There were some changes that need to happen then that I didn't do because, yeah, but I got to 395. Yeah, but that's not 405. Okay. And bench is one of those exercises that tells you very quickly with very little extra weight. Like, you're like, why is this happening? Like, it goes from like, you know, a yeah! little bit of the ground is pretty good. Like, two, next one, next Boom! one, next one's gonna be good. And Pin. it comes off the chest, you're like, Nothing. It's like yeah. it's like it, the last rep I did just deleted me from the equation. <laughs> it's the craziest shit. And, and, and so now I understand. By the way, well, I fucked up. But um, but that's the thing is at the time I didn't. So therefore yeah. I didn't go to four or five. Yeah. Because I got so frustrated. But you know what I mean because the part that was missing was not the bench. It was me. Mm -hmm. Me getting frustrated. Me not going like all right. What do I need? Yeah, you needed better. Yeah. You need more muscle, first of all, and uh, <coughs> let's not let's not symbol. You needed better muscles. Yeah. You needed more upper back because now I realize how much my upper back actually is not as strong as I thought it was. Like there's a number of stuff, yeah, because I did not know, yeah. and that's the point. Until you get it, you don't know. Like you didn't know who your wife was going to be before you met her. You like all that yeah. stuff. You didn't. Could you? This Joe Rogan did not know. That he was going to have uh, Tulsi Gabbard <laughs> 50 and... 50 million listens a, or whatever, yeah. Right, or whatever the fuck he had yeah. per week. I don't think he knew he was going to do and one I, podcast a day with um, presidential candidates. And I promise you this. Bernie! If, however, 10, 15 years ago, when, when they sat down and started all of that, if he would have set that as an objective... He never would have gotten I want to take this thing that's me and my friends just smoking weed and fucking watching YouTube videos... And get videos, Bernie Sanders on it. And I am going to have presidential candidates and hundreds of millions of downloads every month and going to essentially be the new Tonight Show. Like, every decision that you made with that in mind 
would have fucked that whole thing up anyways. If he started exactly. with that in mind, and it's always, I always heard that in yep. business. It's, they always say, I'll begin with the end in mind. You know, figure out where you want to end with your exit. And it's like, I've said this before on the podcast, any business I've ever been a part of, yep. if I plan past a year, hopefully in that year, the business is a, if we're doing things right, has taken a different shape and grown in different directions that I couldn't yes. have predicted a year before. Right. And if I stayed online, on track, towards something I thought I wanted, it'd fucking take away from everything else that you, every right. opportunity that you could be having. Right, it's like, yeah, it, it's like thinking you know, you think you know what it's going to be to put like 100 pounds on your squat. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to tell you, you don't. Yeah. There are certain things that happen at each stage where the squat is not, it's not the same exercise anymore. No, no. The exercise changes. And what it does to you, like recovery-wise, that changes too. And you have muscle that you didn't even know existed that start to come into play. And then, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it changes who you are as a person too, because the amount of, you know what I mean? Like everything changes. Yeah. So, so, but my point is you don't know. And that's the first thing you need to understand. And so that's why objective versus constraint is so important. Yeah. And tension over position, because tension over position will, you need to experience all this too, by the way. To understand, you need to experience. So it's not enough that I give you always abstract um, thoughts, concepts. You have to experience it as well, which I think is a major part of strong fit, is mm -hmm. experimentation, which a lot of people uh, are doing too much of what we say instead of like, let me try to figure mm -hmm. this out. Um, so tension over position is a good way for you to experiment that, fuck, I fucked this up before. Like we, and I think we're succeeding at that. Yes. And, and that's where the internal talk versus external talk came about. Is like, I kept seeing people that only, that basically told, and still to this day, told people to do external torque only. Glute mid on the squat, or knees mm -hmm. out, or like externally rotate, or whatever. I'm like, but this, is there, if there's external torque, always, is it, how can the body not have internal torque? I'm just, I'm curious. Yeah. How can you load and uh, express the yeah. tension only in external, how can you load in external torque and then Exploding external torque. I was I'm doing like, my best on this left side for a long time. <laughs> right. Like, no, but, but, but I mean, like, um, where do you get the tension from? Mm -hmm. If you're an external torque, like, don't, aren't your hips going to lose range of Plus, motion exactly. at some point? Yeah. So aside from it, the injury risk there, what you do is you biomechanically, have this, this hard ceiling to your potential. No, but please, biomechanically, like, your hips don't turn only one way. Yeah. What about the other way? Are you saying there is no muscle that turns the hip? toward the inside, it's actually and they say like, yeah, because they say, well, internal torque, like it's gonna hurt your hips. People that low kick seem to be plenty of tension yeah. that way. You know, if you watch too, uh, you know, equipped benching. Uh, yeah. uh, sorry, not benching. Well, benching and squatting, yeah. actually. You know, if you look at someone in a squat suit, what does it do? Yeah. It's essentially giving you all of that internal tension. Yeah, exactly. Meaning, so, so then you when you just, do uh, see those guys yeah. squat, yes, at that level, they are, they don't. They can have this extreme external torque bias because the equipment is it's safely giving providing a, yeah, and it's giving in. them the and, internal and, torque. And yeah. of course, there is something about that equipment exists for the sake of uh, just so your top numbers can be higher. But the fact is, you can train injury free for a long time, uh, uh, compete injury free mm -hmm. and progress for a long time in equipment. Same thing with the bench. Most yeah. el elite benchers, if you're going to be one of the best benchers in the world. You'll go until you tear your pec, yeah. and then you're going to get close to that and tear your pec. And oh, somewhere in there, you might there. break yeah. up, break your own records in there. But that's kind of about where you fall. And however, you bench in a shirt, what's it going to do? Yep. Yeah. And there you are. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, these guys are able to do an, an exercise for competition, which is outside right. of the fitness thing. But then they're able to have that balance in there because then all they're doing is just locking out. And, the and by the way, what people understand with the, with the people as squat like that is when they squat, they actually have to push themselves down. Yes. Because the, the squat suit won't let you squat a thousand pounds until you actually push down. To mm -hmm. push down, you're going to have to go into internal torque. Yeah. And then you see, it's, that's why often if you see in a equipped benching, mm -hmm. uh, where if guys are maybe a little new or they're not sure on their weights, yep. If you get past single ply, you get into like multi ply benching. Some of those meets are a little if you because, miss, because you miss. Well, well, yeah, yeah, but you'll see guys like can't get it down. Yep, can't get it to their. They got and then they press. Yep. can't get it down and fuck. Yep. No, it just. But then I'll, you'll also see guys get it down and then practically 
fire the weight off the top yeah. of the, over yeah, the rack. Because so. those suits are so yeah. strong. Yeah, it's yeah. A very interesting to watch. But that gives you, I've never uh, bench or squatted with, I've uh, never used equipment ever, Nor but I, I, watched, it, yeah. I watched a lot of it and I talked to a lot of powerlifters saying like, how do you do this? And I read about it and everything because I wanted to understand what the concept was. Yeah. That's what, so, but that, that, and that, that gives you a better understanding on how to bench raw. Yeah. Plus because, understanding yeah. that, like you described, once, yeah. once we go from the objectives and the constraints, and then you get into some of the, the kind of the fundamental concepts yeah. and nutrition and into movement, um, now you can look at something like this. It maybe it's outside of your scope and understand like when you know internal right. and external torque and how that fits, you can figure out the bench. these things yeah. make more sense to you and then maybe you're not the CrossFit guy shitting on equipped lifters when you have no fucking idea what you're talking about yeah. and they might eat you. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Um, and plus, like that way, because the key is instead of, by the way, shitting on stuff, you can look at something and learn from it. Yes, Remember, yeah. Jimi Hendrix used to go in, in, in small bars and listen to shitty groups uh, just so he could spot a cool sound he liked yeah. or a transition that he could use. Yeah. Right. So that's why we, sh in order to increase knowledge, that's what you need to do. You need to look at stuff and go like, how does that work? Yeah. You need to be curious. Einstein said that, actually. But it's a, it's a game of curiosity. That's what it is. That's what understanding is about. It's being curious about everything and trying to apply the pattern. That's what I do all the time. And so that's where the internal torque versus external torque uh, concept came about because I was like, it can't just be external torque. Because like, I remember at the time, it was like the early CrossFit stuff where there were like external torque and everything. Yeah, but everything. I'm like, but when I punch, when I swim, when I throw. And then all of even the rehab exercises. Were, yeah, it yeah. always external torque. Like, but when I run, when I sprint, I know it, it's mostly toward the center of the body. So how come no one is talking about this? I was like, this is so strange. Yeah. I mean, and so when I first put it up, people were like, yeah, but Kelly Starrett said external torque. I'm like, yes. And I'm not saying there is no external torque. I'm like, what if there's external torque and internal torque? What yeah. if there's a play between the two we don't fully understand? Again, I wasn't trying to go out there saying like, look, I, I got the Ten Commandments, you know, from the Mount Sinai, I'm bringing down the Word of God. It was like, I don't get it. Yeah. I have a question. I don't get it. I think, and by doing that and, and keep saying like, I believe this internal talk, this is what I mean. Five years later, I believe we've made at least the world of CrossFit better because now they teach, like, ben, uh, you know, Coach Bergener teaches mm -hmm. internal talk and everything. We, we're making the world is a safer place yeah. when it comes to snatching. We have helped a number of people with lower back and shoulders. All right, so how did we do it? By pushing the understanding of movement. Mm -hmm. And that movement is framed, also has to be framed in the higher principles of using constraints Always. instead of objectives uh, and because if, yes. that is the basis of tension over position. And that exactly, is, and if you don't understand that, yeah. then you won't understand how to apply internal torque, then you won't be able to do it as well as you should. So you won't be able to express your potential fully. So we really want to kind of guide someone through this. It's going to kind of go those fundamental principles, right. the nutrition stuff, because everybody eats. Right. So before we get after the internal torque, external torque, I would tell someone to go toward the fundamentals of the nervous system. Okay. Because now we're starting to get in the stuff where you need to understand how the body works at a level because that will impact the rest of the conversation. Yeah, so now that you were so able to relate yeah. to something, we need to... So it's almost like this start at the top, get down here, and then when we get to the fundamentals mm -hmm. of the back nervous up, system, yeah. now you get to reapply we that. We could go back up to an abstract... Fine, and an I abstract think you're right. Yeah. When we had talked about this earlier, I said, geez, but that is really the contextual information for everything too, right? And, yes. But I think yes. you had a good point that, but it's pretty concept heavy and that movement is going to give people such a better tool to apply the nutrition and, 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 and the nervous and, system. And understand. This is time. where I've made uh, a mistake, but that's uh, part of, this is actually the McKinsey stuff we're doing. Yeah. They gave us like a, almost like a psych psychological profile for work, but actually applies in my life even more mm -hmm. than you applies at life. And they were showing that my biggest uh, problem, my biggest pitfall is that is being too abstract, talking in conceptual, yeah. always in concept. I have a very conceptual intelligence mm -hmm. and I'm extremely curious. And so I have a tendency to always go there. But, um, and he was making a very good point in uh, one of the stuff was like, whenever you get frustrated about something, think what would the leader in me do? And, and that's a very good point. It's like, I can't ask you to understand if you cannot relate. Yeah. So I go into super 
abstract concept that you might not be able to relate to. So I need to give you something to relate to so you can experiment, understand, and then move you to the and next stage. And if you don't, this is a trick I see often out there, mm -hmm. if you don't get people to understand, what you could do though, is then just stay in the abstract and conceptual and sound really smart and important. <laughs> You know what I mean? You, you, because you can do that, Fancy and then names. and then people have to pay you to make them understand. And but that's right. not what you're trying to do. That's that, one of no, the no, understanding. No, no. Oh, is all people yours. are doing it with my shit. <laughs> yes, you know? yes. There's plenty of people using my stuff to sell <coughs> their shit. I've seen. I have to tell you about an IG video I saw oh, Jesus. yesterday. You're gonna love that one. That's <laughs> the dumbest thing I've ever seen. That's all stuff dumbed down to a level where I was ashamed where to watch it. Where it's almost useless. Uh, no, but it was just the dumbest thing ever. I'm like, how dare you sell this? Oh, anyway, um, <laughs> so, um, but the, uh, right, right. So I need people to, to be, to. So it's not about, it's not about an, like an ego or feeling smart or look at what I've learned. That's the thing that I think. Yes. You, you've been accused of being a little brash and ego sometimes before, but I don't think it's right. I think uh, it's they, about. No, but by the way, they say I have a big ego because I was bashing CrossFit. Yeah. I am not bashing CrossFit. Yeah. I can point out that something is wrong without being bashful. Also, if I had the time, and I don't, so don't fucking ask me to do this, guys, but I could go through and list you very specifically defending CrossFit oh in five to 15 word clips that would be 10 minutes long on this thing. Like, yeah. Just I do it so all the time. Stop it. <laughs> no, but by the way, if you truly care, you, what are you want to, to help? fix the holes. If you're on a ship and um, the ship has holes and you're the captain, not the captain in my case for CrossFit, but like you care, you try to fix the holes. Mm -hmm. you, like the people, the, the guy that said uh, that I was bashing, I was uh, defamatory to CrossFitters when I said they use their traps too much. I was like, really? Like, you think that's not a problem? And I just think that you would have a pretty good understanding of like, what percentage of them do based on the ones that you've talked to and worked with. You mean like a thousand gym owners, for yeah, example? Right? Yeah. Like, so the fact that you know six and then I know a thousand. Anyway, yeah. but it's again like, well, None of my you, friends you, use traps exactly, much, right. but I don't know how much traps yeah, is too much. Except like, yeah. yeah. But, um, the, but the the key was like, well, because what, what I did really, my, so the biggest mistake I did was to show a problem. But I'm like, but then how are we going to fix them? If we don't show problems, then you're living in La La Land mm -hmm. where there is no problem ever. CrossFit is great. But that's how we ended up where we are now. Yeah. And they were playing. So how dare you say Glassman left for six years? It's irrelevant. I'm like, it's not irrelevant to the conversation. No. And I'm, it's very relevant I to the conversation. I promise that he would say that there was some sort of an effect there that he would prefer hadn't happened. Exactly. Whether and, he needed that time or not, and by do the it way, again or not. I said the problem we're facing now, I, I've been talking about it for three years now. Yeah. Right, so when you told me to shut up back then. So, but what, what annoys me the most with those people is they're, 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 they're the first one to leave the ship when you start sinking. Mm -hmm. There's a rat leaving the ship. Yeah. So they go like, yeah, 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 let's not talk about what's bad because they are using mm -hmm. CrossFit and the second it goes bad, they'll move on to the next one. Yeah. That's, those are the first one to leave the ship when he thinks, well, me, I'm trying to make sure it doesn't sink because I like that ship a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why I, I get pissed on stuff like that. Well, by the way, I lost my track of thought from where I was we before. We were just going on to kind of the, the principle in the end of all of this after it, right. is understanding. And that's why we kind of put the nervous system stuff at the end because by then <laughs> right. you will have learned to experiment, you will have learned to learn, right. and now you can add another layer to it all. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a big one, it's a huge subject, but also the reason it's such a big subject is because we are not talking about it. Mm -hmm. well, which is really the point we're trying to make all the time is like this has to be included in the calculations yeah. right like for whatever reason we don't like when it comes to nutrition when it comes to movement we are pretending that the nervous system does not have an action of all this I had that that argument with the OPEX um, community about what, what I said was the nervous system precedes the energy system I still don't understand why they ended up me bashing the OPEX system, like even on that video, I did not bash mm -hmm. them at all anyway. But like the whole thing turned into that, that fiasco. What I said that the nervous system precedes the energy system, but the idea, the, the fact is that we talk about energy system with that, uh, without an understanding of the nervous system first, which is insane. Yeah. How can we not include that in calculations? Well, and the thing is, if you, then, if you do isolate everything on the energy system stuff in where it is, certainly that information is probably, the problem is what points you in which direction is the nervous system. 
know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. Because it's like you don't really get to decide. Like you do have to understand before you can use those energy systems as a tool. Right, like and, and we, we proved that said. on the endurance podcast. Exactly. But yeah. we still have people coming and saying, uh, yeah, but that guy, that you know, that guy wrote that. He wrote that on top athletes going to the Olympics, which is not most of the people that you have because they are not in the same place and therefore their system doesn't build. That mm-hmm. doesn't negate what the guy said. Just the guy said it in a very specific context. In that case of people that already have an insurance base. Right. Okay, but what if you don't? Then yeah. you need to build it. All right, so how do we build it? That was kind of the endurance podcast yeah. we, we, we were doing. But that does not invalidate the fact that that very smart guy who trains Olympians, what he said is just... He talked about one thing where there are many other points that need to be integrated to have an overall view of what's happening. Yeah, that's what's important. It's like, at, say, an athlete at that level, there is a, there is a, if it's me, there is an average of, like, so let's say there's a thousand pieces that have to be put together to make me at that level. I might have 800 missing pieces right yeah. now. However, at that level, he can, those coaches, those things, they can narrow the context because most of those athletes at that level might only be missing eight or nine pieces out of a thousand. Yeah. So they can narrow it down, athletes. So you have to l- understand that it's with a training base, that right. already you're above X amount of mileage, the, the, X amount of years the talent, of training. The genetics. Genetic the, talent yeah. that just is maybe not even, it's not even really a, a part of the equation or a part of the study because... That's just how they got themselves in the room. Everyone in that room exactly. is genetically talented. That's why they're a part of this. But how do you quantify that? Uh, how do you quantify that most of them aren't freaked out by the fact that they are being studied? <laughs> you know right, what I mean? by the way. What, they, they, what they if you do it with normal people? They're yeah. all weird. And so there's just there's too can, much. By the way, and then even to do the studies without taking into account if, for example, they're going, can you study someone's performance without knowing, for example, if they're going through a breakup or their parents their mom are dying of cancer. Do you think that would affect performance? No. Of course it would, right? Like, so how is, if you're not including this in, in the study, then what you're studying is very narrow. So, and I don't mind that because sometimes we need specialization, but that means that you can't take that and make a generalization out of it, yeah. which is what I see all the time. We had a, <laughs> we had a terrible policy. It was a kiss of death rule when I used to play basketball. It was no girlfriends during the season. The whole season. Well, it wasn't like a real rule. Okay, but, but yeah. The ones that got girlfriends pretty much made it very clear to us that we did not need to have girlfriends during the season because their performance would... Yeah. And then before the game... Like, bang, I, yeah. I don't need none of that stress. <laughs> right, right. So, okay, so the, this is... <laughs> it does matter. Well, but, but yeah, but, exa- but that's not part of the study now, is it? No. But, so my, my biggest problem is we do studies that are very, very... Um, narrow in context yeah. but take then we take those studies and generalize it and use it in a wide you know in a much 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 wider context but then that can't work and so that's a little bit what i saw with nutrition as well where everything between the carbs and stuff like that were uh, done in a, such a specific thing that it could not be applied outside of it yeah and that outside ap- ap- application is the main thing I think people need to take away from this. Is, is right. with everything that is, experiment with it, and but really your application of it is what's valuable to us too. That's the thing yes. that people need to know. Is like we yes we can know you understand it. We don't know you understand it until I see it working in your space and on you and your life yeah. and how it's integrated. So I think for people anything that they take from Strong Fit, it's like. You need to focus on applying and integrating. Uh, I see it in business. We would see it in business uh, stuff all the time. You'd go to a, like a training thing or a sales training thing, and you come back hot, like all right, we got all Mm -hmm. this stuff. And what happens if you do not dig in and like give actionable plans for the implementation? In a week, it fizzles off completely. And so, just taking in information and kind of learning, but mostly memorizing, getting a little hope. Doesn't do you any and good. And by the way, I think that's one of the major. And it doesn't problems. do us any good if that's all you're exactly. doing. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's a major problem in the fitness industry is they're being told that that, that it is enough, mm-hmm. that you can do that weekend seminar, and then you're different on Monday yeah. without putting the working and stuff. I think that's being sold to them all the time, which is a bit the school system too. Like when you go to the next grade, you know, like you pass a test, you know that subject. No, you yeah. don't. <laughs> Two weeks from now, six weeks from now, you have forgotten 80%. Yeah. Because it's, that's what happens to memorization. You forget. Yeah. Like, I don't remember the geography that I learned. Oh, my God. 
uh, in school. <laughs> I forgot most of it. History, I kind of like, but yeah. you, you know I mean, like the, the idea that you pass a test means that you know the subject is ridiculous. It means you just know that day. Yeah. Right. So it's a little bit the same thing they, we, they're promoting in the fitness industry. It's like, oh yeah, I know how to squat now. No, you know how to squat that weight. Yeah. You don't know how to squat 100 pounds more. It's going to require many other things for you to do that. But so, but people don't like to hear that. No, I know how to squat now. I spent five years. I'm like, great. So you just started. Yeah. <laughs> and so a lot of stuff is being sold as such. It's like, oh, you know nutrition, you know movement. No, you're on your way. Yeah. Like it's a process. It's, there's no goal here. There's no... You're never at the finish line. And that's why I think to, to, to no wrap finish. up is like the basis of everything that we're doing at Strong Fit is learning, right? Yeah. Essentially. And uh, some, understanding. some guiding learning. and learning and yeah. understanding. And then, the, but that is why the information is free. And yeah. you have the opportunity to learn and understand on your own. And the only things that you charge for is, and as a company we charge for, is our time. Long time. Yeah. If you yeah. want my time or our time, yeah. then that you have to pay for. But yeah. the most of the, the information out there is so that you, is to help you understand how the shit works. And those podcasts are done for one reason, is to tell you that you need to understand if you want to get better. I believe that you are being lied to by people who tell you this is what to do and that is enough for you to become better. I think that's not true. Mm -hmm. I think that's bullshit. I think they're selling you something, and I think for you to get better, you need to understand. And we and I mentioned last time, if you want what good coaching is, good coaching is someone's going to hold you to a higher standard. I believe not that as well. Not someone's going to come in and tell you that no, sweetheart, you're just, just, good just there's, there's a You program, don't even need this. to get that much better. You don't do even you? need to understand. Yeah. This is that's where I get. You that's the big one. You don't need to understand. An athlete yeah. doesn't need to understand what he's doing. He slows him down. And that's a cultural thing. That's is again. It's almost in embedded in the school system on the way up but I mean if you are you're a person in the world and if you have a coach yeah. and and like it's on you then as the client to say I need to understand why this is happening well yeah it's don't you get know. me wrong like I'm blaming the the system yeah. for good reason but it's also on you guys to yeah. to to want to understand like uh, in boxing they used to say education softens the men Mm -hmm. I mean, and stuff. So, so it's there's a cultural thing also where we say athletes don't need to understand. But sometimes it's also because you know athletes are not that smart, so let's not ask too much. It, there's a little bit of that as well. And I, uh, but even first of all, athletes are non-athletes. To me, we, you're still human beings. So there's still it's, the it's also much need. more difficult to teach and give understanding that is true. than it is to give directions. And right, which is all, by the way, ask question in a very smart way, but never offer answers, yeah. which is I see a lot of. Yeah. I see a lot of people ha using big words, sounding super smart, but never actually answering yeah. what the question was. It's just asking the questions, but not answering them. That's very easy to do. Yeah. Like the people that, that give you the true information, like it's not... Yeah, it's not, it's not flashy, it's the Dave Tate. Like watch the Dave Tate, um, Dan mm -hmm. Green... Yeah, videos where they explain to you what they do for squatting and you'll see like it's yeah. it's you know it's not clear cut it's not a one two three no. it's not like yeah just do that it's like no you're gonna have to learn you're gonna have to do this yeah. How, why would you do that well, well i kind of like this i realize and every time they say because by now i know it works for me and that's i like how you how you tied that up with you know look at like dave tate and some of those people that have yeah. been out there because you with all the new stuff it's very easy for people to like lose sight of the fundamentals too yeah. of those basics and guys there is a wealth of information out there for free Dave Tate look so at elitefts.com it's a yeah. goddamn incredible resource it's amazing it's amazing and take so if you learn something here filter it through somewhere else and see what you can take away as you go through like yeah. all of that stuff is like you really need to be searching for information hey, by the way and this is <laughs> Dave Tate stuff is part of the things where I learn. Yeah, same here. Yeah. I, no, but like, it's, I, I get all my stuff from somewhere. It's yeah. not like, I mean, I come up with a lot of stuff, but mostly because I ask the right, the right questions. Yeah. That's the difference between a robot and us, an AI and us. We know we can ask the right questions, which at the end comes down to that. It's not, that's constraint versus objective. Constraint is the right question. You got to give me the opportunity to do the best segue ever. The answer to the question, where are you going to get your sandbags at? Yeah. Strongfitequipment.com. I think that's the right. Uh, uh, Strongfitequipment.com for the uh, sandbag shirts. Mm -hmm. uh, also .eu for everywhere in Europe. We got ropes in stock everywhere, I think. And so, and 
order them, get them out of the office. I, I went out there to the ropes, meet yeah. a guy there to send one with him, and I was like, fuck, he's got to go. They're in Julian's yeah, I need, way. Exa- I need a place to train. <laughs> so uh, we have strongfit.com, uh, seminar dates, and everything are there. So yep. we haven't even talked about seminars much lately, but we have seminars, coaches week. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about it in the next stuff. one. That's all good. Then we've got... Um, Oh, fuck, I don't even remember what else. Instagram, StrongFit1, UK32, Tyler F. And Stone, Rare Barracuda. CrossFit Morristown. <sighs> CrossFit Morristown. <laughs> We've got the affiliate yeah. group. It's CF Motown on CF Instagram. CF Motown. Yep. Everything else you can find, it'll come through the Instagram page one way or another. At, at some point. <laughs> so thanks a lot for listening. Don't forget about Manta Fitness in Australia if you want sandbags. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.